the chorus, let us magnify the name of the Lord together. If you knew anything remotely about God, you'll magnify him. He created you, he kept you until you got to the point of being born again. He has taken care of you since then because he gave Jesus to die for you, because he has so much love for you, and he counts you amongst his beloved. Not to say you have become perfectly perfect, but you are endeavoring. I am talking about those who endeavor, who have endeavored to follow God, the way God wants them to follow. But let's assume that you are not one of them, you can become one of them. Learn to follow God, it will be well with you. Today we are going to read 2 Kings chapter 8. We're actually reading verse 1 to verse 3, and then we'll read verse 6. But I'll encourage you to read 1 to 6 on your own completely. I am going to talk about the things in verses 4 and 5. 2 Kings 8, 1 to 3. Then Elisha spoke to the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise and go, you and your household, and stay wherever you can, for the Lord has called for a famine, and furthermore, it will come upon the land for seven years. So the woman arose and did according to the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household and dwelt in the land of the Philistines seven years. Verse 3. It came to pass at the end of seven years that the woman returned from the land of the Philistines and she went to make an appeal to the king for her house and for her land. Praise the Lord. Obeying God without looking back. Very difficult to do sometimes. You know, we can obey God when what he says we should do is in consonance with what we already have in mind. When what he says we should do is the kind of thing we have been praying for. So you immediately do it. You are obeying God. Now what happens when what he says you should do does not make sense at all? Or anyway, when there is no basis whatsoever for what he says you should do, or when what he says you should do is directly opposite what you would think of or imagine for yourself. Do you will obey God? That is when you start looking for somebody else to confirm and another person to pray for it. And well, you need to fast and be sure it's the Lord that is speaking to you. When he spoke to you about the things you wanted, did you ask for a second opinion from another person? Or did you take a fast before you believed it? What I am saying is this, we make this selective obedience of God, and that's horrible, that's bad. That does not show that we trust God absolutely, which is what should be. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. In how many things do we acknowledge God? In how many things are we not leaning on our own understanding? And somebody will say, yes, God gave you a mind so that you can analyze things, you can do things. He expects you to function. You know what the scripture says? It does not say that those who function with their minds are the children of God. Rather, it says, they that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Are you led by the Spirit of God? Do you submit to God in all things? Here is a woman, there is nothing wrong whatsoever in the land. Everything is going normally, life is booming, and Elisha shows up and tells the woman, well, there is going to be famine in the land, seven years, pack your things, leave. Go live wherever you can. What happens to my house, just leave. There is going to be drastic famine in the land, seven years. The woman obeys. There is no doubt that the woman had reason to obey. Because she didn't have a son, is the same Elisha that prayed for her. She had a son. After so many years of marriage, being childless. And then along the line where that child had become a teenager, he died. She ran back to Elisha. Elisha came and restored the dead. Brought him back to life. 
So that by the time Elisha told the woman, pack and go, this man knew that this is the word of the prophet. Now the question is, the word of your prophet that comes to pass in your life, the next time he tells you to do a thing, do you agree? Would you do it? There is no famine in the land, there's nothing at all. And the prophet says, pack, leave. Leave how? Now let's remember when Elisha initially asked the woman, what do you want me to do for you? as a prophet. He said, no, I belong in the land. What she was saying is this. She was of the noble class, of the ruling class. She had everything. That's the kind of person that you say, pack, leave, when she has everything connected to the government in power. As a matter of fact, almost into the inner circles of the government. But she left obedience to God without leaning on your own understanding. Trust the Lord, not leaning on your understanding. Now, by the time she came back, seven years after, somebody has taken her home. All of what she had, her property, her lands, had been taken by others. She had now become a destitute. She went to the king to plead. And I said you should read verse 4 and verse 5 on your own. It was at the same time that she went to the king. It so happened by God's special arrangement that this king heard of the exploits of Elisha and wanted to know the details of it and sent for Gehazi and said, come, tell me the story of your master, the exploits that he did. And he talked about the woman whose son was restored to life. And the scripture says, as he was telling the king this story, that's when the woman arrived, to ask for her things, to plead that her things be restored to her. Can you imagine? Somebody will say, oh, coincidence. No, God's special arrangement. So that she could walk in at the same time. And Elisha immediately recognized her and told the king, this is the woman. Now let's read verse 6. And when the king asked the woman, she told him, so the king appointed a certain officer for her, saying, Restore all that was hers, and all the proceeds of the field from the day that she left the land until now. Praise the Lord. God is wonderful. She left for seven years and came back after seven years and did not lose any bit of whatever belonged to her. Neither did she lose any bit of the resources that accrued to her during the seven years. I am talking about obeying God without thinking of yourself. God takes care of you. God goes ahead of you. How would the woman have thought or would she have known that when she left, everything that was proceeds of her will be left behind for her? That all the money that accrued from her farm produce and all will be kept for her as if she was there herself to take care of it. But she wasn't there. She had gone to enjoy herself as it were. God said, go look for a place, live anywhere. And that was one other disastrous part of that instruction. Go wherever you can. God did not tell her where she was going to. If you had the same instruction, Lord, where am I going to? Lord, where should I go to? And she went to the wrong place, the land of the Philistines, who were enemies of Israel. You won't do that. I am talking about just obeying God. All of the business here is about obedience. Because when you obey God, even the things that you should have lost cannot be lost. When you obey God, he takes care of every aspect of your life and ensures that you are not lacking in any way. If anything, he makes sure that you gain profit by it. Did the woman gain profit for the seven years? Yes. And you can be sure that if the king was directly interested, huh, she would get more than what she would ordinarily have gotten, even if she was there. You know, in this case, you won't talk about who stole what or who didn't steal what. Everything will be complete. Whereas when she was there, somebody would have stolen and things would happen anyhow. She wouldn't have had that much. Obedience. When you obey God, he restores to you everything. Let's learn to obey God. Not when it's comfortable for us, not when it's convenient for us. 
not when we think it suits us completely. But every time, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on his own understanding. He will always be a blessing to your life. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.